Okay, it must be Tuesday. <laughs> Orientation is a time and space. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. I'm the mm, guest host, <laughs> and that's Ethan Allen. He's the host guest, and you're here on Likeable Science because it's likable. This is all likable. Okay, we're going to talk today about something that's, that's actually emerging in the news, um, and it's the, it's the age of global enlightenment, or perhaps not. And it all has to do with AI, artificial intelligence, and 5G, right. and, and, and tariffs, and little, little wars that our president right. is creating with China, so and how be, that affects things. So it could be the age of global annihilation instead, right? Yeah, global <laughs> enlightenment, <laughs> annihilation. The two are close. It depends you on what he had for potato. breakfast, yeah. <laughs> it was a hamburger or what? <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a worthy discussion to inquire because, why? Because, you know, it's an economy's of scale issue. If you're, you know, creating a brand new technology, uh, hardware, software, uh, that has a global effect, that is of global consequence, then you have to have cooperation and collaboration. I mean, we know that in industry and in technology and in academia in general for a long time. You do better when you collaborate. Better, right. And if you go and talk to the people, the scientists at UH, for example, they're all in collaborations right. all over the world. Absolutely. And they've been that way. And I, I would call that an age of enlightenment that's, until recently. That's how science works, basically. So yeah. science works. Right. That's, that's how science, the, really, these days, with the sophistication of science and scientific discovery, it's the only way science can right. work. You right. can't move ahead without it. Right. Okay, so we have two significant technologies that promise to change the world, mm -hmm. and that uh, are, they're not just limited to the United States, they're really global technologies. Right. And, and you could say that China has taken some of it from us, mm -hmm. and that's probably so in some ways. Um, but you could also say that inevitably it would have to be a global collaboration, not only the U.S. and China, but other countries, Europe, uh, and many countries. So, so the question really is, uh, what is happening now in terms of that level of collaboration in the two technologies we're talking about, one artificial intelligence, which is really a software uh, technology, and the other 5G, which is a combination of software and hardware for mm -hmm. telecom. So when we start out with the tariffs, we start out with these trade wars that our president has created with China, and we, we wonder how that sort of gets in the way, because at the moment these trade wars started, at the moment you know, we started getting into uh, crosswise with China, which I, I think is going to be a long-term thing myself. Um, then, you know, we had some really good things going. We had artificial intelligence, and they were picking up on that. We were competing. We were rivals, if you will. Mm -hmm. But rivals who cooperate are, you know, it's a good result. Uh, and 5G, which has been talked about for, oh, two or three years at least, maybe more, um, it's coming of age now. And it's, it's revolutionary as far as right. telecom is concerned. It's faster. It's more ubiquitous. It's, it's going to strap the world together in terms of telecom. It's going to change your cell phone dramatically in terms right. of speed and power and function. So these things are major technologies. And the question is, I don't like to you know, ask you easy <laughs> questions, <laughs> is how stunted is the development of these technologies in a world where we're arguing with uh, people who, countries who might otherwise be our collaborators. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I mean, you're quite right. In a better ideal world, we would be co cooperating with them on both these things, on the 5G, putting 5G out smoothly, hooking in AI to it, and working for everyone's good, right? Uh, and the world would well, I hadn't thought of that. The two, right. the two are, oh, yeah, they, 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 they can collaborate. Oh, the two technologies, exactly. can, what an intersection that is. Exactly. Wow. Because the AI sort of will help organize the 5G, if you will, and tell which pieces to talk to which other pieces and, you know, da da da. Um, so they really work at, uh, in synergy with one another. Yeah. And it seems. Well, what, what was it that Putin said about two years ago? Basically, he sort of said that this whole field of artificial intelligence basically is the next thing that's going to determine really who, who runs the world. And basically, whoever f comes out on top of that is basically going to 
or the oh, world. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's, it's, and, it's scary, but true. Yeah, and that's what, what I think, as I see it, what the U.S. is very scared about it is with China getting becoming a global leader in the 5G, we're going to lose out, and we don't want to lose out on that. We, we are very worried if we lose out on that, that, that you know, we'll, be, we'll become a second-class nation. You know? did, you, did you hear that thing about Russia? Russia has, uh, has, is testing on the, um, the termination of uh, Internet connections uh, with places outside of Russia. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna isolate themselves electronically just for a test to be, to be sure that they know who's coming from outside and who's coming from inside because they want to be in a position to terminate anything from the outside and, and be completely um, self-reliant on the inside. Why am I concerned about that? It's not collaboration. It's something else. No. Um, one of the articles I was reading today, and I think it was in Forbes, points out what AI seems to have done somehow is spawned this sort of every nation for itself mentality. Mm -hmm. It's Could like be Trump did that. Well, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. The, the nationalists, uh, the whole nationalist movement is, is very much that way. And AI somehow is, it seems to be sort of helping that. Uh, and it's clearly not in the world's best interest. I mean, the world is a very small place these days, and what we throw up in the air lands in some other country, and what they throw up in the air lands in ours, and what you dump in your water ends up around the world in their water. And you know, we can't get away from the fact that we're all connected. Uh, we're more and more, the more we learn, the more we see how deeply we're connected. Yeah, so to be isolationist and nationalistic yeah. now, it runs against the grain. It's, you know, we have an organic phenomenon happening, and that stops it. Yeah, since, I mean, if you think of it, since the end of World War II, we've basically been in a pretty sort of stable position, sort of geopolitically, right? I mean, there have been some big powers, there's been some lesser powers. Yes, there have been a few other little, little wars and things like that. Part of that was the United States, as the winner, so to speak, right. of World War II, set the global order. Right. And for a long time, you know, even though we were sometimes better, sometimes worse at it, uh, we had a positive influence on the world order. Right. Now, uh, under this president and under Putin and uh, Xi Jinping, we're not setting the world order so much anymore. Right, right. And exactly. And some of these other nations are developing them themselves and sort of walking away from our influence. Uh, it's, it's really frightening. I mean, if you think about that, the whole, uh, the whole business of how... Uh, the nations interact with one another it, it is rapidly shifting and becoming very unclear now because of 5G, because of AI. And if that gets sort of goes a little askew uh, and gets in, involving like weaponry and things, suddenly we can be in a, a real mess. Yeah. You know? Ooh. But let's let's look at the you know the best case analysis and the worst case analysis. Okay. Let's assume that we don't have this nationalistic thing going on. Mm -hmm. Let's assume, you know, we're mm, in Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> okay, and everybody is working with everybody else, and it's like, you know, the best model for academia sure. and industry and so forth. And, of course, you have patent rights and right. all that, and, but, but mostly people are willing to collaborate. Now, if we do that, right. if we were committed to doing mm -hmm. that, we're not, I think, but right. if we're committed to doing that, we, and Russia and China were also committed, right. and, and Europe and so forth, um, what, what would the best result look like? Well, then, then you've got things like international cooperation on water. You've got everyone sharing their technology so everyone can run agriculture better. So you, you, every sort of garden plot is functioning at sort of maximum efficiency, growing the right things at the right time, the right amount of water, nutrients are being delivered. Everything runs much more efficiently. You don't need to transport stuff this far. You don't have these big emergencies. Uh, everyone's sharing data so that when if they see a, a storm coming across another country, they tell the people downstream, sort of, you know, if you know if you need to withhold water behind a dam or something, you can let your downstream neighbors know well in advance you're going to have to do this, and you know they'll, they can take appropriate precautions. I mean, all of this stuff has the, the world could be just a much much better place for everyone involved. And given the reality of climate change. Sounds to me like this helps us deal with climate change. Yes. As a matter of fact, without collaborating, we can't deal with climate right, change. Right. It's global. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the, the maps uh, and projections indicate we're gonna, there's going to be parts of the world that are really going to be uh, much less habitable than they are right now. Uh, the places currently that are hot and dry are going to get hotter and drier. 
and a lot of people just aren't going to be able to live there anymore, and they're going to have to find somewhere to go. Now, where do you think that is? You know, it's to places that are wetter. Migration. There's yeah. migration involved in this. And Borders and migration is also a function of this nationalistic thing right. and would be improved if we could uh, come together on it. Right. So how would we come together? I mean, I want to go a little further on that, on that model. Uh, would we come together by uh, breaking down the borders? Would we come together by electronics, by telecom, uh, by better software that is shared? How would we come together? I think, to some extent, by all those things, yeah. We would recognize that oftentimes it's actually good to have an influx of new people in your country. A lot of the data says that really improves your economy. There are new ideas in there. People are doing new jobs. The people who have been doing the one job maybe get to go off and do more exciting things themselves. There are potentials for a lot of nice things to happen, a lot of very positive things to happen. Yeah. And... Uh, <sighs> It sounds like, it, you know, that if we could use this technology together, I mean, it, oh, right. it requires a, a kind of spirit of togetherness, then we could have a kind of global order where everybody had a sort of democratic position, the playing field would be leveled, um, where we would all benefit by anything that, that, that was good that happened. Exactly. I mean, there's this idea of disruptive technologies, and in a sense, AI is basically poised to be a sort of a, a disruptive, disruptive technology, yeah. you know, sort of di disruptive square, because yeah. it's going to impact on, with 5G, basically, everything and how the world really runs. Yes. You know, it's not going to just impact one sector. It's going to impact all the sectors. So everybody, you know, for example, there's one piece of technology, I'm sure it's uh, AI, with it's instantaneous translation of any language. Right. Yeah. Okay, I want to talk to uh, Putin or somebody. I pick up the phone, and yep. he hears English, and I hear Eng whatever. Right. Um, he hears Russian, and right. I hear English. So um, you, you don't have those barriers, and you have a sort of a global community, a global society where everybody is exactly. in one in one order, in one society. And, exactly. And this technology would make that happen. It would also, the, that kind of society would advance the technology. It's a right. spiral up. Exactly. Everyone's collaborating, sharing their good ideas, tracking stuff, watching what's happening in the oceans, taking appropriate actions to protect the remaining fish stocks and help them. I mean, it's just, yeah, every sort of, every facet of every, in, of every industry is going to be impacted. And it could all be positive. Yeah. So, but since the Trump administration has started, we have seen, and he has accelerated this move, this movement to um, national nationalism, mm -hmm. uh, which is really isolationism, right. where uh, you know each one for his own self and right. be damned the rest, um, which is um, changed things. Right. And uh, you know, I think we can see. Don't don't you think we can see indications of the effects of that already? Oh, yeah. We can see how that affects uh, the possibility of global cooperation. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we see it right now, of course, over in Europe with the whole Brexit issue. Good example. That, that's already having devastating impacts on Britain's economy. Uh, wait to and, wait till and, the deadline in March. Yeah, yeah, right. When that happens, yeah, people are really worried that, that there's going to be just a whole lot of really ugly fallout that could reignite the whole Ireland, North Ireland conflict very easily uh, because they're going to have to put up a border there. Uh, you know, so I, I think we've established that geopolitical events and, and environments affect the technology and the advance of the technology, and the technology likewise in the right environment will affect geo geopolitics well, both certainly, ways. It'll, it'll certainly affect it. Yeah, you know, how, how it affects it depends on that. And, and now right. we have we have a problem because we, um, we have a, a geopolitical environment that's not positive, that's nationalistic, and uh, competitive is the wrong word, adversarial, right. okay? And that's affecting the worldwide collaboration on the new technologies and limiting it to country by country. Right. Um, so this is not particularly a good idea. When we come back from this break, Ethan, I would like to ask you the dark side. Well, okay. you know, I asked you, you know, the best analysis, sure. now I want to ask you, okay. what happens if we continue to do this separation of nations? We'll be right back after this break with Ethan Allen, our likable scientist, our chief scientist. You'll see. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m., on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. 
all our shows will show up and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. Ethan Allen, our likable scientist. And we're talking about, uh, you know, I guess it's the, the, the end of the age of enlightenment and technology is, you know, right on our doorstep here. And so, um, I, you know, I wanted to ask you where, where this all goes if, if we take a trend, a trend line, a sea change um, on, the, on the current state of affairs, which is clearly a movement toward nationalism and isolationism, not only in the U.S., but in other places. It's catching like a virus. Right. And I think it teaches us, one more point, it teaches us that a negative leader of a powerful, a, a formerly powerful country, okay, uh, can have huge effects on other countries, right. and he can create negativity really everywhere, and that's global ne negativity, and if you, P.S., if you have global negativity around the world, what does that lead to exactly? <laughs> It leads to war. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, anyway, so we we have this global ne negativity that we have seen can be established or enhanced by one negative leader. Very interesting phenomenon in the human species. So the question is, where does this go? What is what does this sea change take take us to? Um, you know, on on the dark side, on the pessimistic approach. Right. Well, okay. Let's just play out this five G scenario. Uh, we put Canada in a very tight spot, right, by having them arrest uh, the leader of Huawei Technologies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, China is, is now super annoyed at us and at Canada. Canada's probably super annoyed at us for having put them in this rather awkward situation where they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. This could all break down. This, this could lead to severing of diplomatic relationships and then... Uh, well, that means it, business relationships. Suddenly business relationships fall apart. Isolationism increases. That national means academic uh, relationships. There's more, more finger pointing back and forth. They think we're, we're essentially trying to cut them out of, of the game of te technology. Hostility, uh, termination we, we, of we collaboration. We think they're trying to uh, infiltrate and learn all of our secrets. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. See where it gets yeah. you. Very rapidly, this could lead to very, very, very bad things. Uh, so, but in the case of China, China has plenty of AI right now, and actually, it was contemplating competing with us and being part of a, a 5G, you know, expansion that would go not only in China but everywhere. Um, using Huawei or one of the, one of the, one of the telecom companies over there um, as, as the as a vehicle for doing this, and we said, no, 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 we're afraid of that. Um, so the result is that China will do it by itself. Okay, so I give you, A, the possibility of a global expansion of 5G mm -hmm. using artificial intelligence, or the possibility of China, you know, retrenching, uh, you know, folding in on itself, and doing, you know, this technology development, this, this fabulous technology all by itself. Uh, so, A, does that work as well? And B, how does it affect the United States if they do it by themselves? Yeah, I mean, this, this could be very bad, right? The European leaders already have looked at, at the Chinese and their 5G and basically said, yeah, there might be some issues with it, but we think we can basically work around it. We can do our own security overrides on it, and we think we can make it work. If they basically buy into it, China continues to trade with them. The U.S. is left out in the cold as sort of trying to run our own systems, which probably won't work with theirs. We are suddenly an isolated unit. We then become a very small island, as it were, basically, uh, with the rest of the world all being run by China. And, and what good does that sort of do for us? You know, China's Silk Road increases. Their trading partners uh, <coughs> are developed. Uh, we, meanwhile, would get increasingly cut off from these, these, same, these same parties who we're already seem like we're, we're on the road to making enemies out of our former friends, and you know. And our our um, 
uh, former rivals like right. China um, reorganize their own relationships and they fly over us. Exactly. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And so, for example, if they decided that the market was better for them, and I think it's an easy decision in Europe or Africa or other parts of Asia, um, you know, then they can advance their technology and thus their influence without us. Exactly. We're a flyover. Yeah. We're, we become irrelevant. Right. And, if, and we become irrelevant, I think, you know, the AI affects um, financial transactions, mm -hmm. 5G affects, and the combination clearly affects financial transactions. Right. So our ability to invest and do financial, you know, connections with other places in the world right. is undermined. And thus, and here's, here's one thing that would flow from, in my opinion, flow from that. We are the reserve currency. The mm -hmm. dollar is the reserve currency. Right. We don't have to be the reserve currency. If other countries and continents lose faith, you know, in our ability and our, mm, our, our participation in the world order, mm -hmm. uh, they'll find another currency that will do better. Maybe the one. Yes, exactly. Uh, it, exactly. It, won't be, it won't be the English. Uh, <laughs> it won't be <laughs> the pound. No, they're done. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it probably won't be the uh, euro either. Right. Um, but, it, but clearly, the U.S. Um, position as the leader in financials, right. financial arrangements right. and financial, uh, you know, financial mm, standards right. uh, will change. So I think the world order will change, and we will not be in the same position we are now right. uh, when that happens. Right. Now, there is this new uh, American AI initiative that Trump announced the other day, and, and um, the five points about our you know, investing in the infrastructure and the human capacity and the, uh, freeing up the resources and da -da -da, all, all, the, all the usual stuff. And I mean, if this really works in some sense, we're all, it's all of the good, but again, you don't, we've seen nothing from the current administration to suggest that they're interested in collaborating much with the rest of the world, and, and something like this has to be done collaboratively. We can't run our own system. Well, you know? And the other aspect of that is that our president has a way with the truth. <laughs> <laughs> he also has a way, a way with following up and actually doing things. We've heard so many initiatives of his that go nowhere. So, you know, we had a, he had a thought about AI one day, made, his, made a tweet over it. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I guarantee that before it happens, there's going to be a lot of humbug. Uh, and, and there's a fair right chance it won't force. happen. Yeah, it'll happen right after the Space Force, you know. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Now, I mean, this is this is sort of it's well, it's deeply worrisome, right? Uh, we, we can't, we, we don't want to proceed down this road. Anyone can look at that road and sort of say, being nationalistic and isolationist in the realm of, of advanced intelligence, artificial intelligence, advanced technologies, is leads nowhere. It leads you right off a cliff, basically. Um, right. And, and particularly if the rest of the world is starting to play together a little bit now. Maybe the rest of the world will all fall apart too and everyone will get isolationist, in which case we'll probably break out in a dozen small wars somewhere and we'll solve global warming by setting off a bunch of nukes and, you know, won't that be fun? Well, yeah, I mean, but you're right. I mean, the, the, uh, both of the alternatives, given our isolation, are bleak. One is uh, the rest of the world unites against us, right. does its own thing, um, it's a real possibility, right. and I want to talk about how the One Belt, One Road initiative in China demonstrates this. And the other possibility is that the whole world falls apart, right. and they're unable to create a new world order, and so we fall into this you know, general global hostility right. and a war and nukes, and that'll be the level of, that'll be the level of technology, right. nuclear I technology. Mean, it will resemble what Europe was in, in sort of medieval exactly. times. Right? A bunch of little tiny nation states hurling stuff and throwing troops at one another and, yeah. Yeah, this is this, uh, reminiscent of, uh, was it Barbara Tuckman and the, the Guns of August, which was the description of how Europe worked on the eve of World War I, and it was all a trip hammer. If this happens, then that nation will, you know, be an aggressor on that nation, and everybody had a war plan, and, and when the, the Duke of uh, Serbia, whatever, the Archduke right. of, um, Ferdinand, when, yeah. Ferdinand, when he was uh, shot, right. uh, then it started the chain reaction all around Europe, and right. nobody really realized that it was going to have this huge effect. Right. But with uh, hey, with nuclear weapons, uh, that 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 whole um, you know possibility is yeah. enhanced now. Yeah. So the, the the prospects are not so good here, and um, and I feel that um, it's probably going to be in a sequence. First, China 
uh, looking at One Belt, One Road as a successful initiative. Mm -hmm. And there are, there's some arguments that it's not as successful as they say. Right. Um, you know, makes hay right into Europe, mm -hmm. right into, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Middle East mm -hmm. um, and into Central Asia yeah. uh, and into Africa. I mean, they've already right. done that. In fact, in South America, um, you know, the Chinese are in South America, including mm -hmm. Venezuela. And so are the Russians. Mm -hmm. I mean, the world, they're, they're, the, the, these guys are taking the pickings from the world. They're trying to get resources. They're trying to develop influence. They're trying to make investments. Right. <clears throat> they're trying to own infrastructure in various uh, places around the world, and we're not doing that. Right. We've retreated from that. Right, right. So give it a few more years, and uh, we will be less than relevant in every continent you can think about, yeah. including our own southern border, including our own, uh, you know, yeah. the, the border that Trump doesn't like, including all of South America is, is a, good, a good target for these countries that would like to try out their technology yeah. Uh, and get resources from South America. Right. So, <clears throat> so what do we do about this, Ethan? This is pretty serious. I know it's a political question, right. but how do we stop this? I mean, suppose we made you, our likable scientist, the president of the United <laughs> States, and we told you there has been incalculable damage already mm -hmm. during this administration to you know, the influence and the um, authority uh, and the contribution of the United States to the world. Right. Um, how would you, and these things in some way, you know, they don't, they're, they're irreversible. They, you right, know, no. You, do you can't damage. go back. And, yeah. You have to go forward. Right. So how would you correct this? How would you fix this? What would you do? I give you as much authority as a president should have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this stage, I would think you'd want to call an international meeting of the, the sort of the best <coughs> and brightest political, uh, scientific, humanitarian, religious, philosophical, academic leaders from around the world and get everyone together and, and begin to say, let's, let's, let's look at this as a global challenge. You know? let's, let's, let us consider this and let us find the best way to move forward together. Because it's one of these situations where uh, I mean, what, what do they say during the American Revolution? If we don't, if we don't hang together, we'll surely all hang separately, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's sort of that kind of thing. It's, if we don't work in a collaborative situation, we are very likely to fall apart into this, this chaotic state. And we, we, nobody wants that. It's no one's best interest. So you really get the key leaders of the world together and say, look, let's stop our squabbling and bickering throw some of this in front of the world court if we need to for arbitration, you know, try to, you know, extend a little bit of a hand to friendship and, and a little bit of trust where we can and, and try to rebuild the relationships. You know? Yeah. Um, it's all about relationships. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you know, there's a carrot and a stick in what you say. The, uh, the carrot is obviously we can do better right. together. We can make this technology serve right. everyone. And the stick is, and this really, you know, was pretty persuasive, um, we have to deal with climate change. We have to use every resource we yeah. can. We have to collaborate all over the world to right. deal with climate change. And if we don't, we will hang separately. We, all of that's us, will hang right. separately. Yeah. So that's pretty persuasive. And I, and I know that you could do this. That's why I'm voting for you. <laughs> Ethan Allen for president, <laughs> right away. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. You're Great welcome, to Jack. talk to you. <laughs> <laughs>